don't have any money. Our government has spent it in other areas yeah. and not on our own country. <laughs> we need to reel America in and make it back the great country it once was. Look at Flint now. Is it the great city it once was? Is Flint part of America, the great country of development, the great country of freedom, the great country of, you know, supposedly do whatever you want, but I don't, you know, feel happy with anything that's going on right now within our government. They're just all up in arms telling us folks what we should do. Right. And, you know, that is one of the biggest excuses for a big government. That's the main thing they're supposed to take care of is the infrastructure of this country. And as we can see, it's been a huge failure, not only there in Flint, but Michigan, other places as well. Richard, thank you so much. And we look forward to speaking with you when we touch down in Flint tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Just give me a call. I'll be glad to show you the city and, um, and help you with any information or anything you need while you're here. Thank you. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free video podcast and audio podcast that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's PrisonPlanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew. The reporters, you are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first. And then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win. And then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. We've seen President Obama come out and say that he wants GPS tracked biometric firearms. Now, if you choose to get a fingerprint scanner on your firearm, that's your business. If you choose to have a GPS tracker on your firearm, that's your business. If you choose to have a gun locker, that is your business. My issue is I don't want these things to be mandated by President Obama or anybody else. And with this in mind, we've seen guys like Eric Holder, uh, Dianne Feinstein, uh, Vice President Joe Biden, many other people as well come out and say that we need all these measures to uh, save the kids, as it were. I've done multiple reports talking about how if uh, all the smart gun technology, this biometric technology, this fingerprint technology was on existing firearms, we'd have multiple dead children. Uh, which children do you ask? The 12-year-old girl in Oklahoma who shot an intruder when she was home alone. If the, her firearm had a fingerprint technology a scanner on it, it would not be registered to her. She wouldn't be able to use it. Also, the 15-year-old boy in, uh, in Houston, he was home with his little sister, two guys broke in the back door, and he gave him the business end of an AR-15. Now, people will say, well, what about the little kid who shot the instructor with an Uzi? Yeah, that bad things happen, and personally, I would not let a little kid shoot an Uzi gun, but, you know, to each his own. But the notion that all this is for the kids, that it's going to keep the kids safe, it's completely ridiculous. Many people grow up 
hunting and shooting, uh, shooting cans off the fence or, you know, going out and bagging their first deer. It's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say cultural, but I think it's a lot of geographical things that play into this. You got people from inner city New York or Detroit, Michigan or wherever else who may have a very negative view because they turn on the TV and all they see is, you know, X number of people got shot in the city of Chicago. Whereas you go someplace like Texas, when our governor goes hunting, they put that on the news and it's a great time. He takes his daughters out there and everything's safe and fun. So there's a lot of that to get over. But the issue is they want to come for your guns, not in a gun grab door to door confiscation. They did in Hurricane Katrina, but they want to come through the back door with the registration, with the uh, ammo limits in your magazine, saying what type of firearm you can have and also mandating this GPS and smart gun technology. And with more on this, we go to a special report from David Knight. At the Consumer Electronics Show, which just ended in Las Vegas, a vendor wanted to demonstrate his smart gun lock, saying it answers President Obama's call for a smart gun. But the Consumer Electronics Show wouldn't allow him to bring an unloaded gun into the show, not even an imitation gun, not even for Obama. And there's an important lesson in that. They really don't want better tech. They just want to get rid of guns out of fear and ignorance. We're going to look at why smart guns are a dumb idea. But first, consider the gun expert the Obama administration has enlisted as a smart gun salesman. You know the single most consequential thing you can do and have no impact on the Second Amendment? Buy a smart gun. Remember the last time Biden gave us gun advice? She's asking if... Um a ban goes into effect on certain kinds of weapons and high-capacity magazines. And what's your name? Um, Kate. Kate, if you want to protect yourself, get a double-barrel shotgun, have the shells of 12-gauge shotgun, and I promise you, as I told my wife, we live in an area that's wooded and it's somewhat secluded. I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out put that double-barrel shotgun and fired two blasts. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. Buy a shotgun. Buy a smart gun. Now he's back with more idiotic advice. How does that make sense? What? What possible sense does that make? To help push the idea of smart guns, mainstream media from Fox News to CNN turns to James Bond as an example. Both the PPKS 9mm short. There's a microdermal sensor in the grip. It's been coded to your palm print so only you can fire it. While having a gun that only authorized users can fire might sound like a great idea, Bond has lots of gadgets that in the real world would be impractical and prohibitively expensive to build. But Obama says the tech hurdles can be overcome. If, if you are a gun owner, I would think that you would at least want a choice. They don't want to be in a situation where, oh no, someone's coming through my front door, I've got to reboot my gun. It's the reliability, stupid. Adding biometric or RFID sensors to a gun means adding multiple layers of new complicated technology that can go wrong. The blinking red LED light means that you have 33% battery life left and you must change the batteries. There weren't batteries that were small enough, there weren't uh, chips that were, were reliable enough, there wasn't biometric technology that was good enough to, to recognize fingerprint IDs. Guns are finely honed mechanical devices. They're rugged, they can withstand rough use. Smart guns will add electronics that can fail, can break, that will need a charged power source. And most importantly, they can be disabled by criminals or governments. This vulnerability and others will come from the software, which will also have bugs that will get worse with software updates, just like your phone. And there are other concerns. Any wireless coupling can decouple. It can have interference, or it can be hacked. And will you grip a biometric handle in the same way when you're under stress or under combat? So far, there's only been one attempt at a smart gun, the IP-1 from the German manufacturer Armatix. The gun is implanted with an electronic chip that allows it to be fired only if the shooter is wearing a companion watch into which a pin number has been entered. It was only offered in a 22 caliber, but it cost $1,800, five times the cost of other 22s, and not offered in a self-defense caliber. But it had other problems. It took seven push-button commands and 12 seconds before it could be fired. And it had three or four misfires per 11-round magazine repeatedly. 
So it's not good, it's not fast, it's not cheap, and it's laughably unreliable. Not even the gun grabbers in New Jersey could call it smart with a straight face. And that's important, because New Jersey has passed a law that once a smart gun exists in the market, only smart guns will be allowed to be sold in New Jersey. This is why gun users threatened a boycott of manufacturers like Smith & Wesson when they announced plans to work on a smart gun. I, I don't exactly understand this, and maybe there will be somebody in the audience who, who explains it to me. Uh, back in 1997, uh, the CEO of Colt said, you know, we can design or are starting to develop guns where you can only use it if you've got a chip. A boycott was called against them, and, and they had to back off of developing that technology. Uh, the same with Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson responded to the boycott by canceling smart gun research and firing the CEO that proposed it. So users are not asking for smart guns. As a matter of fact, they strongly don't want them. So what does Obama do? He will use his unlimited Federal Reserves to build one and shove it down our throats. Obama likes to compare smart guns to cell phones. I didn't bring my cell phone with me, but my cell phone like yours, I just put my thumbprint on. Well, why can't you do that for a gun? The cell phone analogy goes beyond biometric locks. The government has the capability to shut down all cell phones in an area or selectively turn off their cameras, although they haven't used that capability yet. And they want the ability to track and disable your gun, even if it still works with all the added technology bells and whistles. If there's an app that can help us find a missing tablet, if we can do it for your iPad, there's no reason we can't do it with a stolen gun. Here's the bottom line. If you let someone get close enough to take your gun away, you're not doing it right. If you let children get access to your guns, you're not doing it right. We need smart people who control their guns, not smart guns controlled by government. We need better training and education, not unaffordable, unreliable weapons that can be disabled by the government. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. And that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to PrisonPlanet.tv, where right now you can get six months free. They get you the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there on PPTV. That's it for the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. Infowars.com I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep restful sleep, knockout's it. Infowarslife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. Infowarslife.com. That's Infowarslife.com, or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the Infowars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at Infowarsnews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.